Everyone has done a lot of work to be here today. There's been hours practicing, poems memorized, uh, microphone adjusting. There's been work here to, to, to get here today, and we want to honor all of that before we say goodbye to our next six poets. So um, I'd like to remind everyone that although this is a competition, uh, the point is that you did it. The point is that you showed up, that you might have been nervous and scared, and you signed up anyway. And you might have been nervous and scared, but you memorized that poem anyway. And you might have been nervous and scared, but you just killed your performance today. And the judges were all commenting on me about how good this and how talented this group of young people are. So please give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> But sadly, it is the point in the competition in which we have to say goodbye to six of our competitors. Competing poets in the third round, I will read the order in which you will be reading. But first, I want to give a warm applause to these next poets. Please give it up and say goodbye to Grace Mayer, John Flanagan, Chaia Wang, Samaya Farah, Bakisa Abdiwaheb, Ashley Haxton. Please give it up for those poets. <laughs> poets who will not be competing in the third round, please stick around. We have swag bags for you, and we would like to applaud you one more time at the end of the round. This next round is going to go really fast, and in this order, well, I'll just do on deck poets. Are you okay with that if I just keep saying on deck? So on deck is Jessica. Does that sound good, poets? We, feel, we don't want to hear the order, or we feel good? We feel good? Yeah, great. Awesome. So uh, again, please stick around to the end. We've got some awesome prizes to give everyone, and we want to honor you for being on this stage. But now we're going to hear from the top six poets moving forward in this very final round of 2016 Poetry Out Loud State Finals. Are you ready to get this started? Yeah. All right. Coming up first, please start clapping, start clapping, start clapping, start clapping, start clapping. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, and give all your love. Welcoming back to the stage, Anna! Candles by Carl Dennis. If on your grandmother's birthday you burn a candle to honor her memory, you might think of burning an extra to honor the memory of someone who never met her. A man who may have come to the town she lived in looking for work and never found it. Picture him taking a stroll one morning after a month of grief with the want ads to refresh himself in the park before moving on. Suppose he notices on the gravel path the shards of a green glass bottle that your grandmother, then still a girl, will be destined to step on when she wanders barefoot away from her school picnic. If he doesn't stoop down and scoop the mess up with the want ad section and carry it to a trash can. For you to burn a candle for him, you needn't suppose the cut would be a deep one, just deep enough to keep her at home the night of the hayride when she meets Helen, who has soon to become her dearest friend, whose brother George, 30 years later, helps your grandfather with a loan so his shoe store doesn't go under in the Great Depression. And his son, your father, is able to stay in school where his love of learning is fanned into flames, a love he labors later to kindle in you. How grateful you are for your father's efforts is shown by the candles you've burned for him. But today, for a change, why not a candle for the man whose name is unknown to you? Take a moment to wonder whether he died at home with friends and family or alone on the road. On the lookout for no one to sit at his bedside and hold his hand 
the very hand it's time for you to imagine holding. Uh, this is a selfish plug. Um, I am the curriculum director of a uh, summer camp for Poetry Slam high school students. If you're interested in spoken word and you are a young person from the ages 14 to 19, incoming, incoming freshmen to outgoing seniors, and you're interested in going to a summer camp where we write performance, we write and perform poetry for a week long. It's my favorite week of the year. Human Win is a counselor along with me, along with some of the best spoken word poets in the country. We are all counselors. So if you're interested in that, come let me know. I'll give you some more information during the next break. On deck is Abigail coming up next. Please start clapping, start clapping, start clapping, start clapping, and give it up for Jessica. Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. The sea is calm tonight. The tide is full. The moon lies fair upon the straits. On the French coast, the light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of England stand glimmering and vast out in the tranquil bay. Come to the window, sweet is the night air. Only from the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon blanched land. Listen. You hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves drop back and fling at their return at the high strand. Begin and cease. And then again begin with tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in. Sophocles long ago heard it on the Aegean and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. We find also in the sound a thought, hearing it by this distant northern sea. The sea of faith was once too at the full, and round earth's shore lay like the folds of a bright girdle furled. But now, I only hear its melancholy long withdrawing roar retreating to the breath of the night wind down the vast edges drear and naked shingles of the world. Ah, love. Let us be true to one another. For the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor help for pain. And we are here as on a darkling plain swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. Give it up for the second poet in the last round of this 2006 in Poetry Out Loud State final competition. My judges are being furiously judgmental, apparently. On deck, we have Megan. All right, how many people are enjoying global warming? <laughs> My man over there. <laughs> just kidding. Um, just, that was a weird thing to say, Sierra. Never talk about global warming again. All right, I said on deck is Megan, but up next, please welcome back from Harbor City International. Give all your love to Abigail. <laughs> No moon floods the memory of that night by Etheridge Knight. No moon floods the memory of that night, only the rain. I remember the cold rain against our faces and mixing with your tears. Only the rain. I remember the cold rain and your mouth soft and warm. No moon, 
no stars, no jagged pain of lightning, only my impotent tongue and the red rage within my brain, knowing that the chilling rain was our forever. Even as I tried to explain, a revolutionary is a doomed man with no certainties but love and history. But our children must grow up with certainties, and they will make the revolution. By example, we must show the way so plain that our children can go neither right nor left, but straight to freedom. <coughs> no, you said, and you left. No moon floods the memory of that night, only the rain. I remember the cold rain and praying that like the rain returns to the sky, you would return to me again. Give it up for that poet. Let's go team, clap for everyone. All right, on three, say your favorite season. One, two, three. Minnesotans showing up. No one said construction. Um, on deck is a wazi. Judges you doing good. All right, then I want you to start clapping, start clapping, start clapping, and give it up for Megan Joyce. Dear Reader by Rita Mae Reese. You have forgotten it all. You have forgotten your name, where you lived, who you loved. Why? I am simply your nurse. Terse and unlovely, I point to things and remind you what they are. Chair, book, daughter, soup. And when we are alone, I tell you what lies in each direction. This way is death. And this way, after a longer walk, is death. And that way is death, but you won't see it until it is right in front of you. Once, after your niece had been to visit you, and I said something about how you must love her, or she must love you, or something useless like that. You gripped my forearm in your terrible swift hand and said she is everything. You gave me a shake. Everything to me. And then you fell back into the well, deep in the well of everything. And I stand at the edge and call, chair, book, daughter, soup. Give it up to that poet. We only have two poets left in this final round. Audience, are you having fun? <laughs> Woo! All right, judges are furiously tabulating. Their brows are furrowed. Their fingers are sweating. Poets, uh, Faiza, you are on deck. Thank you, judges, for doing such a fantastic job, but please, up next from Twin Cities Academy High School, put your hands together and welcome back to the stage, Awazi! Banneker by Rita Dove. What did he do except lie under a pear tree wrapped in a great cloak and meditate under the heavenly bodies? Venerable, the good people of Baltimore whispered, Shocked and more than a little afraid, after all, it was said he took to strong drink. Why else would he stay out under the stars all night, and why hadn't he married? But who would want him 
neither Ethiopian nor English, neither lucky nor crazy. A capacious bird humming as he pinned in his mind another inflamed letter to President Jefferson. He imagined the reply, polite and rhetorical. Those who have been to Philadelphia reported the statue of Benjamin Franklin before the library. His very size and likeness. A wife? No, thank you. At dawn, he milked the cows, then went inside and put on a pot of stew while he slept. The clock he whittled as a boy still ran. Neighbors woke him up with warm bread and quilts. At nightfall, he took out his rifle. A white main figure stalking the darkened breast of the Union and shot at the stars. And by chance, one went out. Had he killed? I assure thee, my dear sir, lowering his eyes to the field, sweet with the rot of spring, he could see a government's doom city rising from the morass and spreading in a spiral of lights. I want to quickly thank our sponsors one more time, or the people who made this uh, possible. We have Grey Wolf, Coffee House Press, Milkweed Edition to all donated books to all of the participating poets this tournament, which I think is amazing because what makes you better at your craft is consuming it. One more poet in this final round. Are you ready to finish out this last round? Say yes, ma'am. Yes, ma all right. Can you please start clapping, start clapping, start clapping, and give all your love to the last poet of the third round, Faiza. I Find No Peace by Sir Thomas Wyatt. I find no peace, and all my war is done. I fear and hope. I burn and freeze like ice. I fly above the wind, yet can I not arise? And not I have, and all the world I season that loseth nor locketh holdeth me in prison, and holdeth me not, yet can I scape no wise, nor letteth me live, nor die at my device. And yet of death it giveth me occasion. Without eyne I see, and without tongue I plain, I desire to perish, and yet I ask health. I love another, and thus I hate myself. I feed me in sorrow and laugh in all my pain. Likewise, displeaseth me both life and death. And my delight is causer of this strife. Give it up for that poet. That was the last poet in the final round of the 2016 Poetry of Lab Finals. Give it up for yourself. Give it up for the poets. We are going to take one more really, really brief break so that we can tabulate the people who are going to be receiving trophies quickly. I have a, so I have a homework assignment for you. You are like my students trying to leave class, putting their coats on too fast. Teachers know what that is. Number one, this is a, we're going we're gonna to take a five-minute break, a five-minute break, and this is a great time to, one, take a selfie. But two, most importantly, I have a homework assignment for you. I want you to find a poet that you do not know. Find a poet that you do not know, that you thought was awesome, and tell them that they are awesome. This is not about one voice. This is about building up a community. This is not about who wins. This is about the fact that this happened. So please, parents, teachers, students, go find a poet that you do not know and that you liked and tell them what's up. All right, see you back in five minutes. All right, do I have all of the poets back in the house right now? I'm seeing a couple missing. All right, we're going to get this going. We're just going to make our fantastic announcements. First, I need to thank um, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Poetry Foundation, and the Minnesota State Arts Board for making all of this possible. Please applaud them or else I won't get paid. Just kidding. Please applaud all of my fantastic judgmental judges and our scorekeeper. Um, I want to now call all of the performers up to the front. If you touch the stage, 
tonight, please go to the front. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, give it up for them. All right, I want to say this, that regardless of who advances in this competition, um, I am honored by your words, I'm honored by your presence. It matters that you did this, it matters that you're here today. Um, let me announce the amazing, some of the amazing prizes. First of all, I'll say, for the person who, who moves on today and goes to the DC um, National Championships, the winner of that national championship will receive $20,000 to put towards college tuition, which is wild, right? And a total of 50,000 scholarships and school stipends will be awarded to the winner at that national level. So this is what we are working for, friends. But we also have some really amazing prizes. Everyone who participated today, participated today will get a swag bag. Um, once you're done, just go to your right and collect your fantastic swag bag from Catherine and High Five or Two and say thank you for making this happen. But don't let them leave because we want a photo. Oh yeah, don't leave because you're all very photogenic and we need a picture of you, okay? So make sure we all meet, oh, I'll make an announcement when that's done. Um, swag bag, um, I'm gonna announce the top three starting with third place if you are named, I would like you to step forward to be acknowledged and then Catherine is gonna bring you a fantastic trophy as well as some other prizes. So, are we ready to find out who our state champion is? In third place, also I want to say, <laughs> that wasn't even intentional. I wish it was, because then I'd be 10 times more clever than I think I am. Um, but I also want to say that this was incredibly close. Poets, it was within a point, and the top first place tied, and we had to go to the scorebook and see how we break a, a tie for first place, which is you do some magic number stuff. But just so you know, first, second, and third place were all within a one point of each other. One point. Okay? So that's, cr yeah, that's wild. All right, yeah, give it up for the poets. It is so close. All right, in third place, give it up to Awazi. In second place, runner-up who receives $100, and the recipient school also wins $200 stipend to buy poetry books for their school, which is pretty amazing. Please give it up for Megan. <laughs> and in first place, representing our state at the national championship, winning $200 a round trip to DC. Um, and also uh, the student and the teacher coach wins a $100 loft certificate and the school of the winner wins a $500 stipend for poetry books. Do we catch all that? Did I say it in good order? Our Minnesota state representative for 2016 Poetry Out Loud, Out Loud Nationals is Abigail. Give it up for Abigail. Please give it up for all the poets you've heard tonight. Give it up for yourselves. Give it up for Catherine Savage and the Lost. Thank you and have an excellent night.